Welcome back. In today's video and possibly a first right here on the CryptoVisor podcast, we're going to be exploring the Avalanche ecosystem, AVAX cryptocurrency. Is it an investable asset? Where is the price going? And do I believe this could be a millionaire maker coin? We're going to be discussing all of the metrics involved in Avalanche's crypto. We're going to talk a little bit about the ecosystem. We're going to look at dashboards and look at data to understand is Avalanche being used? Does it have the potential to outperform many of the other cryptos? As a lot of crypto uh, you know, evangelists are saying, Avalanche is the key to this cycle. Avalanche is going to be the gaming coin, the building coin. It's going to be the next Solana. Well, in today's video, we're going to be exploring whether that is true in my investment strategy and thesis. And that's all we discuss in today's video. My opinions so do your own research before you make investment choices and don't make investment choices based on what I say, but do me a favor, give the video a free thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We have over 3000 videos on this channel for you guys to explore and watch through dating back to 2018 and we upload every single day. So become a subscriber completely for free. Just click the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. Anyway, let's get into Avalanche. What is Avalanche and the AVAX crypto? Well, a very high level overview is Avalanche is a layer one blockchain that functions as a platform for decentralized applications and custom blockchain networks. It's one of Ethereum's rivals, aiming to unseat Ethereum as the most popular blockchain for smart contracts. It aims to do so by having a higher transaction output of up to 6,500 transactions per second while not com compromising scalability. Now, we're going to show you the data on that metric to actually see if they are achieving that transaction throughput, but we're gonna get there in just a few minutes. This is made possible by Avalanche's unique architecture. The Avalanche network consists of three individual blockchains, the X chain, the C chain, and the P chain. Each chain has a distinct purpose, which is radically different from the approach of Bitcoin and Ethereum, namely having all nodes validate all transactions. Avalanche's blockchain even use different consensus mechanisms based on their cases, use cases. After the mainnet launch in 2020, Avalanche worked on developing its own ecosystem of dApps and DeFi. Different Ethereum-based projects such as SushiSwap and TrueUSD have integrated with Avalanche. And further, the platform is consistently working on improving interoperability between its own ecosystem and Ethereum, like through the development of bridges. And not just bridges but they also have USDC. And you guys know on my channel that USDC is really, really a huge key player in my view from a liquidity standpoint and from a usage standpoint and from a developer standpoint, venture capital standpoint, and bottom line, bridging DeFi and TradFi together. And one of the things that we have, uh, I think that we've missed on this channel is covering blockchains that have promised for years and years, we're going to be the best blockchain. We're going to do this. And they can't even interoperate. They don't even have the basic level bridge to interoperate with the largest DeFi blockchain in the history of the planet, Ethereum. And in my view, USDC is another key indicator of which blockchains are going to do well, which ones are going to see improvement in price, and which ones are going to also see vast growth in the development of the technologies that are built on top of them. I mean, this should be extremely clear to anybody who watches my videos, and it should be clear to you if you're an investor in crypto. If you don't understand these basic tenets of interoperability and you know minimum viable products, you may want to kind of slow down on the investing side a little bit because there are going to be winners and there are going to be losers. And what I try to do is analyze, is this a good investment? Could I become a millionaire from this coin? Not necessarily saying I'm going to become a millionaire from this coin, but could it make me a millionaire? If I invest 10,000, can it make me a millionaire? 1,000, can it make me a millionaire? And so on and so forth. And so if we look, USDC on Avalanche, $421 million is already on the chain. This is natively issued, which effectively means because Circle is tied directly to the Federal Reserve, right? They have access to liquidity from a central bank. This effectively means so does Avalanche. And so if your favorite blockchain is not even on this list, you gotta ask the question, like, how can this even be a success 
from a financial standpoint and from a price moving higher standpoint, which is the point of all of this, how can that happen if you don't even have access to the Federal Reserve? And there's a lot of people who still don't realize this, but AVAX is connected to the Federal Reserve through Circle. Huge, huge. So they have $421 million of native USDC, $421 million. It's a lot of money, guys. And if we look at the number of USDC holders on, um, well, this is Arbitrum. This is not, oh, I was not looking at the wrong chain. Um, so if you look at the number of USDC holders by address type, now keep in mind, this was updated in February or March, and I'm recording this at the end of April, 2024. So it's a little bit outdated, but it kind of gives you a little bit of a gist of Avalanche compared to the other blockchains. Avalanche EOA, which is externally owned accounts versus smart contract USDC. So externally owned accounts is significant on Avalanche, 493,000 USDC uh, EOAs, externally owned accounts. And that's, I mean, it's pretty in line with most of the other major blockchains. Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon obviously has significantly more. USDC volumes held by each type, right? So on the Avalanche blockchain, you could see 189 million and 111 million, so almost $300 million of USDC holder accounts within the Arbitrum ecosystem. And so it should be very clear that USDC is definitely an indicator. We also can see that the price movements of Avalanche uh, over the last you know six or so months have been quite impressive since October of 2023, uh, effectively at kind of like the market low, we were at $8 and it shot up all the way to about $65, which is basically about an 8X or 800% increase just over the course of six months. And now you see that we retraced basically about half, yeah, about half. And so is there still more downside or is there not? Is this investable for the bull market or is it not? Well, we also need to understand what the tokenomics look like for Avalanche. And so if we look at the tokenomics, you can see here that um, right now there's about 300 million or $10 billion worth of Avalanche that are unlocked, that are available, that are liquid, that are not unvested. Then you have um, another unlock coming and we'll, we'll get to the when the unlock, yeah, the unlock event. May of 2022, they're going to be releasing another $314 million or 1.33% of the maximum supply. It looks like every few months they're going to be releasing uh, a certain amount of the maximum supply. And we're going to get into the vesting schedule in just a second here. So I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. So anyway, in May, they're going to be releasing 1.33% of the maximum supply. There's 6.8% locked, meaning unvested, and then about 50% that's untracked. The 50% that's untracked, I'm uh, guessing is the staking rewards, the amount that they give for rewards within the Avalanche ecosystem. Now you may be saying, Cryptovisor, what are the rewards for staking in Avalanche? Well, let's look at that. And don't forget to uh, give this video a free thumbs up because I upload these videos every single day completely for free to keep you guys on top of the latest happening in the financial world. So thumbs up, hit subscribe. Now we can see here Avalanche's reward rate when I'm recording this right around the halving of 2024 is eight, almost eight and a half percent. This is higher than all of the coins that are that have more staked than Avalanche. SWE has 3.6%, Cardano under 3%, Binance under 3%, Solana 7%, and Ethereum 3.4%. Avalanche is more than double what SWE is, more than double what Cardano is, more than double, almost triple what BNB is, right? So there's, there's not even a comparison. Avalanche is clearly a better ecosystem to stake within because you're gonna get higher rewards. Now, it doesn't mean that those rewards are always going to be there. But again, if we look at the vesting schedule, 50% of the allocation of the original supply 
of Avalanche was set for staking 360 million coins. So 360 million coins, uh, and we multiply that by the current price of $33. That's a, uh, basically $12 billion in current value of coins that are set aside to give for staking rewards. That's why I would imagine the percentage is so high. Uh, as time goes on, typically what we see is these staking ecosystems, their staking rewards decrease as more of the coins are in the circulating supply. Similar to the way that as time goes on, the rewards for Bitcoin block production go down. So that's basically the ecosystem of staking. Obviously, if you want to hold the coin and you're staking, you're going to earn more than you're making in the other uh, top 10 ecosystems of stake. So we went through now basically general vesting, we went through staking, we went through USDC implementation and usage. But what's also important that we talk about is the C chain, because the C chain is the smart contract layer of the Avalanche ecosystem. So the C chain or the contract chain is a blockchain within the Avalanche network. Avalanche aims to provide a highly scalable and interoperable ecosystem for dApps and blockchain development. The C chain is one of the blockchain components in the Avalanche network specifically designed for running smart contracts that are compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. So again, in their um, kind of synopsis of what this C chain is, they're not just looking at smart contracts, but they also understand interoperability and smart contracts go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot have a smart contract if it can't even interact with another blockchain. It's not a smart contract, it's a dumb contract in that case. Anyway, um, here are some of the key features and details about the C chain. So the C chain is primarily designed to support Ethereum compatible smart contracts. This means the developers can write and deploy smart contracts using the same programming language and tools that they use on Ethereum. This compatibility makes it easier for developers to migrate their existing Ethereum based dApps to the Avalanche platform. The C chain is optimized for applications that require total ordering. This total ordering ensures that transactions are processed in a specific sequence which can be important for applications like financial transactions or other use cases where the order matters, right? You don't, like, let's say you're sending me $100 and I'm going to spend that $100 on paying my bill. And let's say you send me the money and I pay the bill all within the same type of block. Now, if the block puts your transaction after mine, I'm going to have a negative balance because I'm sending money that I don't actually have because you didn't send it to me yet. So that's why ordering is very important. Your transaction, because your transaction went through first, needs to actually process and settle first before mine does. And if it doesn't do that, for whatever reason, you paid less, the transaction wasn't ordered correctly, that's going to be a negative for all three parties because the person that I'm sending the money to is not going to get the money. I'm going to have a negative balance and you're going to be sending money that was technically already spent. Continuing on, the AVAX crypto is a native asset to the Avalanche network. In the context of the C-chain, you can find specific contract addresses related to AVAX tokens, both on the X-chain and the C-chain. These are used for various purposes. And then com commute commutative applications. Avalanche offers another blockchain called the exchange chain or the X chain that is more suitable for communicative applications where the order of operations doesn't matter as much. The C chain is recommended for applications that need strict ordering to stay constant. And so that is effectively what the C chain is, contract chain. It's one of three within the Avalanche ecosystem. Now, if we look at one of the dashboards that show us some of the activity on the C chain, you can see, by the way, this was updated about uh, half a month ago as well. I would say the beginning of April, 2024. Avalanche had 340,000 active addresses on the C chain. Monthly active addresses on the C chain was over 1.1 million. You can see the daily activity going back to 2021 was obviously at the peak in late 2021 and early 2022 when the market was rotating from a bull market to a bear market. You see some decreased usage in 
uh, active addresses through the bear market into the middle of 2023. An increase in the middle of 2023, a little bit of a decline in the end of 2023, and we're kind of trending back up. I would imagine the sea chain daily activity will probably go beyond the 2022, sorry, 2021 highs in very short order, probably in the year 2024. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but that's basically what we're seeing with most of the metrics uh, within these crypto ecosystems, especially Avalanche being a top 50 chain, potentially going to be a top 10 chain very, very soon, right? Right now, the ranking is number 13. And so that's just one flipping happening, one little pump, and Avalanche is back in the top 10. And I think that Avalanche has a very good chance to stay in the top 10 this upcoming cycle. Continuing on, we can see that active um, sea chain daily activity really started spiking towards the end of 2023, entering 2024. Typically, when you see these massive spikes in any metric, but if you see it in multiple metrics, typically this indicates uh, like staggering in, right? So a lot more contracts being put on the blockchain than a lot more blo uh, uh, a lot more contracts being put on, right? It, it could just be one company or one entity that's causing these major fluctuations, or it could be an indication of more onboarding onto Avalanche. So one company onboarded and two companies onboarded and then three or four companies onboarded. And before you know it, you're having 10 companies or 10 institutions onboarding their um, you know, financial contracts on the blockchain and then you start to see sustained growth. These little jumps that you see here and there are kind of indicators of potential future movements. And so Avalanche, they have their own dashboard as well on their website. Now, remember when we uh, started this video, we talked about Avalanche stating that they're gonna be able to process higher throughput than other blockchains, such as 6,500 transactions per second. Well, if we actually look at the Avalanche network, when I'm recording this, the end of April, 2024, you can see that uh, the maximum transaction per second was observed previous week, right? So basically the pre-halving, pre-Bitcoin halving week was 413. Number one, this is not 6,500, but we are still not in the post-halving Bitcoin bull run yet. But this is a really good number because this shows that Avalanche is able to process hundreds of transactions per second, where in other blockchains, we see the transactions per second at one or two, or even during high usage base is only, you know, Coinbase's blockchain. When I'm recording this video, it's only really peaking out around 30 to 40 transactions per second. It's not really that much. So seeing Avalanche being able to process this is a good sign in my view. Now, if we look at the chart right under, you can see the daily transaction count going back to 2021. And you can see that there has been a lot of growth in 2022, in 2023, and now 2024, it appears that there is more and more growth going on in transactions per day. This is really interesting to see because again, 2021 was the peak of the market. So typically you would, you would see the peak of the transaction volume at the peak of the market. But what we actually see here is as the market was peaking in the bull run, we continued to actually grow at that point. Even through the bear market, we were growing. In a downward moving market, we were growing in the avalanche ecosystem. And I think that the movements that we've seen more recently in 2024, from the price going from $8 to $50 or $60, a lot of this is because of that volume in the beginning of 2024. So you can see more volume, more volatility, more volatility, more potential to move to the upside in price projections. Um, and so, yeah, you can see on the monthly basis transaction count, significant growth is continuing to occur. Daily active users is the same thing. In the bear market or in the rotation to the bear market, more and more active users, more people that, were, that had active addresses going on. And now these numbers are continuing to grow and stay sustained at these levels. So if we can continue to see the, really we're looking for, you know, uh, a move higher, but a steady growth with an upward drift, right? So you may see corrections here and there. You may see a few weeks or months that are down, but as long as the general direction is to the upside, right? Upward drift, that is a good indicator. The trend is your friend, as they say. 
Daily gas usage has also increased. Monthly gas usage, same thing. Unique senders is increasing fairly substantially now with about uh, cumulative nine and a half million unique senders. Unique contracts deployed the cumulative number, 267,000 total addresses. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there is sustained growth and a lot of really positive numbers and metrics that I'm seeing here. This here is their staking dashboard. Uh, like we said, they're staking rewards about 8%. When I'm recording this video, um, I don't know if we can zoom in. It would be better if we could zoom in because this is going back to 2000. So in, uh, in April of 2024, we have 1,733 validators in April. This is actually a really good number. It's not thousands and thousands and thousands of validators, but I would say most of the major chains, there, there is a, over a thousand validators. Um, and I would imagine this is gonna grow as there's more people who enter the crypto and blockchain ecosystem, more people you know, are invested, more people are interested in understanding and growing. And, you know, Avalanche is still a fairly new chain. So there was a little bit of a dip, but even in the midst of the bear market, it looks like there was still over a thousand validators. Delegator count, how many people are actually um, delegating their coins, which basically means staking. April, it shows, sorry, it's very hard to see this. Well, I'd say end of March, it shows 14,000. So 14,000 individual stakers or delegators to uh, the network. This is not that big of a number, but I also don't know what the actual user count is of Avalanche. I would imagine usage of Avalanche by developers is significantly less than Solana. It's significantly less than Ethereum. So just kind of understanding the difference in market caps between Ethereum, Solana, and uh, an Avalanche is important to understand because it gives you better context as to how these coins are actually like leveled. So for instance, Avalanche has $12.5 billion, let's just say $13 billion in market cap. If you look at Solana, it has $60 billion in market cap, which is basically a 4X of Avalanche. And Ethereum is $360 billion. So that's about, I don't know, 10, 20, 30X or 300X, yeah, 300, 100X. Sorry, I'm bad at doing the math on the top of my head. No, it's 30X. 12, uh, let's just do the math on this. 363. This is the market cap of Ethereum. I did that wrong. 363. This is the market cap of Ethereum. 363 billion. We divide that by 13 billion, which is the market cap of Avalanche. And so it's, yeah, 30, almost 30X the size. So if we, like adjust to scale, I would imagine the validators, the number of people actually staking within Avalanche is fairly, uh, it, it's an accurate ratio, if that makes sense. Scaled up, it would probably be similar to Ethereum. And if somebody wants to do the math on that, that would be appreciated. Let me know down below in the comments. Uh, and so, yeah, that's some of the other metrics there. You can see here the validator performance on the Avalanche network. You can see 70 validator, uh, 70.64 is validator stability in the bottom 10%. Validator stability in the bottom 25% is 85%. Validator stability in the top 10% is 100%. So basically, you know, the goal is 80% validator stability. And it looks like, you know, the top 10 is 100%. Top 75% is 95%. So that's a pretty good number, I would imagine. I mean, I... I've never seen this actually being metriced like this, so I don't know even what to compare it to. So we'll just take their word that this is good. <laughs> um, and then they have some offline nodes as well. Down here, they do have a lot of metrics uh, that you can look at on their dashboards, on their website. Uh, but some of them, again, I've never seen these metrics on any blockchain besides Avalanche. So that's also very interesting. You can also see the reward distribution for, I'm guessing, staking or, um, okay, validator reward and delegator rewards. They do a little bit of both, which is good to know. Cumulative rewards to date has been 70 million. Now, remember, in their vesting schedule here, it shows that 
360 million coins were set aside for staking. So that means that if they already distributed 70 million, that's about 290 million coins that are still available for rewards. And that's probably going to be distributed over the next 10 to 15 years, it looks like, based on this uh, increase schedule. But I mean, all of this is just an analysis at a very high level to understand the basics of Avalanche and understand is Avalanche investable um, as a crypto, as an asset. If we look at the, the Avalanche DeFi ecosystem, obviously Avalanche here looks amazing. Avalanche is the number six asset in terms of total value locked with over one, basically just about one and a half billion dollars of total value locked as of the time of me recording this video. And this may be higher or lower based on whenever you're watching it, but it's higher than base, higher than blast, higher than polygon, definitely higher than Cardano now getting pushed out of the top 20, which is uh, pretty interesting stuff. But yeah, guys, just understanding where Avalanche has come from, all the building and development on it and looking at the status of the network that is high performance, good throughput, no major outages. Um, there's definitely, it's not that there's no major, major outages because nobody's using it. There's clearly usage on the blockchain. There's been an increase in validator nodes. There's been an increase in a lot of these metrics, including daily transaction count and active users in the bear market. These are indicators that this, this ecosystem, in my view, is solid. And so does that mean that it's investable? Well, yeah. I mean, I still want to learn a little bit more about the tokenomics, and I'm going to be doing some more research on that on the back end off of this video. And I will be doing updates on Avalanche and Avalanche-specific videos like this. Uh, and they'll also be tied into my uh, you know general news videos as well. And, you know, I'm going to update you guys, you know, maybe in a few months, how I feel about Avalanche, where I am with Avalanche now. Uh, I don't think I've ever owned Avalanche in my portfolio. Maybe I did. I don't remember owning any of it, though. But I am going to be looking for entry points if we do have a capitulation point, uh, probably below the $10 range or $15 range, closer to these October lows. I do think that it will retrace to October lows at some point. But maybe not. I mean, we never know how these markets are going to act and react and move. But, you know, I still think that based on everything that I've seen, Avalanche is primed. I mean, all it needs is more projects to jump on board, more marketing, more uh, maybe company and partnerships and collaborations. And before you know it, Avalanche is going to be a top 10 crypto. And it's very close. Right now, it's number 13. And uh, there's a lot of cryptos in the top 10 that do not belong there. And I don't think that they're going to be there much longer because Avalanche is definitely back on its way to $50 and will be in the top 10 this cycle. Let me know what you guys think about the AVAX cryptocurrency. Don't forget to give this video a free thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss a new video. If you want to help support the channel, click the join button to learn more about becoming a channel member for just $1.99 a month. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments, what do you think about Avalanche Crypto? Are you owning it? Do you own it? Do you plan on buying it? And at what price? See you guys tomorrow. Invest responsibly and crypto on.